So I think we will go ahead and get started. Uh, and Julia and Tiffany, if you guys would kind of, I've made you co-host, so if you would admit while I'm talking. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Will Austin, and I am the director of Denver's Office of Nonprofit Engagement, and we are very excited to finally get this program off the ground and up and running. And we are equally excited to partner with uh, this out of sight national nonprofit training company called Resilient. We'll let them introduce themselves in a moment, but before we get started, uh, just wanna hit a couple of things. Uh, first, again, thank you all for, for joining. And then, uh, you know, we really wanted to get this program started uh, because we, as the city and county of Denver, we utilize nonprofits in practically every policy area that you can think of. And so uh, it behooves us, we believe, to, uh, to, to, to invest in the nonprofits that we work with. So we want to not only grow uh, more nonprofits, but we want to grow a more diverse pool of nonprofits. And we want to create kind of a thriving nonprofit sector because as the pandemic showed us, uh, we came out pretty decent as a city uh, with recovering from the pandemic, but we did it because nonprofits raised their hand and really stepped up for us. And so, uh, so again, this is an investment in that sector to make sure we have strong partners that we can that we can work with. And so, as I mentioned before, uh, we are excited about Resilia. They are a national organization. They are uh, women and African American led and founded, and we're very excited about that. Uh, but before I turn things over to them, I do want, we have our own really cool team here in the uh, Denver's Office of Nonprofit Engagement. So I do wanna just acknowledge uh, those that are here. So uh, first and probably foremost is Julia Mahoney, who is, uh, she actually is the program manager, senior program manager for our nonprofit body of work. So she will be leading that work and you will be seeing a lot of her, I believe. We also have our other uh, program manager, our second body of work for our office is our energy efficiency work. And we work with uh, nonprofits in the energy space. And we just brought on a new young lady uh, in the way of Mary Schultz, who is here joining us, and she's about two weeks in. And then we have a couple of evaluators that help us measure and evaluate our programs. We have Dr. Ken Seeley, uh, who just popped on. And then we have Dr. Christina Finley, who is just popped on as well. And then let's see who else. We have a couple of really cool interns that are helping us with some research and evaluation, just project management. Uh, and, uh, and we have, uh, let's see, who do we have? Uh, Martha yeah. Ray is here. And then where is Hannah McHugh is here. And then last but certainly not least is Tiffany Lee who was actually recently an intern and she just became a contractor for our office. So she's kind of a pinch hitter on several things. Then I see Nydia Gomez, who's also uh, kind of an ad hoc member of our team that uh, helps us out. So we have quite a few hands in our office, but we're all dedicated to making sure we not only increase the number of nonprofits that work with the city, but we kind of uh, we improve the engagement that you have with us, and so it's an an ongoing thing that we do. So with that, I'll stop and I will turn things over to Kayla or Lorraine. I'm not sure which of you will lead off this effort, but I turn it over to the Resilia folks. Yeah, I can take it from here. Thanks, Will. Thanks to the City and County of Denver team. Um, this has definitely been a labor of love to get this program off the ground. So really happy to be here. Let me share my screen. Move my face. 
All right. So today we're really just going to be going over, you know, introductions of me and Lorraine, um, uh, an overview of Brasilia and all the things that our cohort model has to offer. Uh, Lorraine's going to do a live demo of the platform so you can get an idea of what that looks like and how that could, you know, support you and your organization in fulfilling your mission. And um, after that, we'll move into a Q&A. I'll start off with introductions. My name is Kayla Kubayama. I am based in Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, my stepson actually lives in Aurora, so I'm in Denver uh, quite a bit right there for Christmas this year. But um, I am a philanthropic partnerships manager, meaning I work very closely with Will and the team at City and County of Denver um, to make sure that the, the services that we're providing you all as nonprofit partners is uh, of the highest quality and is very responsive to the needs in the community. Um, I also work as a coach for Resilia in the areas of um, fundraising, grant writing, marketing, communications, strategic planning, uh, data and impact, and storytelling. And um, just a little bit about me from a professional side, I've worked on the nonprofit side, mainly in marketing, um, development, and communications, and then most recently was actually working for a community foundation as a program officer. That's actually how I learned about Resilia. Um, they were also a client of Resilia, so learning about them um, really got me interested in sort of jumping over and being able to support a, a larger variety of nonprofits. But I'll pass it over to Lorraine. Thanks, Kayla. Hi, everyone. Um, good afternoon. Good day, wherever you're calling from. Um, my name is Lorraine Kowili. I'm a nonprofit partnerships manager here at Resilia. Um, essentially, my primary purpose here in the team is to support um, our nonprofit partners, um, grantee organizations to fully utilize Resilia and to make sure that you have everything that you might need um, within the funder program. Um, just a little bit about myself. I'm actually based in the Bay Area. So if you're familiar with Bay Area geography, um, I live right next to Oakland in a small town called Alameda. Um, I, before coming to Resilia, I spent many years in the nonprofit sector um, as a volunteer, as a fundraiser, as a program manager, um, and also within the foundation philanthropic sector. So it's been such a true joy to bring um, all of those experiences and expertise into my work. Um, as a partnerships manager and us also as a coach. Um, I'm also, I'm a coach in many areas, including fundraising and grants. So been really exciting and it's been really great to um, get to work with our nonprofit partners um, to meet their needs and goals. Yeah, pass it back to you, Kayla. Thank you. So um, just a little bit about Resilia. Resilia, um, we have funders such as the City and County of Denver sponsor Resilia's capacity building and advocacy programs, and that helps nonprofits like you um, to strengthen your organizational capacity, capture outcomes, and tell powerful stories and advance equity efforts. And we do this in three main ways. Number one is our nonprofit first online platform. We also do one to one nonprofit coaching as well as peer to peer learning opportunities. So I'll talk a little bit about some of those personalized program components that you're going to see um, uh, as a member of this cohort. So in the spirit of personalized support, our number one resource we offer as a partner of Resilia is our dedicated nonprofit coaching. So we have very well-rounded staff, many of us, as uh, you know, Lorraine and I talked about, coming from the tech space or the nonprofit fields. We're very comfortable in advising in many areas that organizations struggle with. So this can look like strategizing what a successful email campaign looks like, working through board management needs, putting together a fundraising plan, and much more. Uh, we act not really as consultants, but more as thought partners to work with you to break down barriers that we have experienced um, in the nonprofit field. And in that way, we really empower teams to strengthen their skill sets. Um, so there's um, sort of a long-term uh, impact of, of our support beyond the sort of year of, of programming support that we're able to offer. So most of the nonprofit partners we have, um, the pleasure of supporting here at Resilia, as well as each in our prior positions, um, they're BIPOC led, serving organizations with a key focus on creating systemic change towards equity in their communities. And as I mentioned earlier, organizations are also gonna have access to continuous ongoing capacity building support 
through our templates, webinars, and consistently updated training videos, and much more through the Resilia platform. This ranges from board meeting agenda templates, grant application toolkits, <clears throat> multi-layered catalog to improve your knowledge on best practices from fundraising to board management to DEI efforts with your staff. We have uh, tips and best practices from experts in the field, and we are consistently creating updated and fresh content so that there are always new resources available. And on that note, we also love to hear feedback from organizations like yourselves. We want to make sure that uh, we're meeting nonprofit leaders where they are. So if there are pain points that you're experiencing that you're not seeing, you know, represented in our online platform, definitely let me know, let Lorraine know, and we'll work with our curriculum team to actually build that out. Because more likely than not, if you're experiencing it, other nonprofits are experiencing that as well. And then the third arm of support is our um, access to community of uh, peers that you're able to learn from. So throughout the year of programming, there's gonna be opportunities for lunch and learns, casual digital happy hours with other nonprofit partners, um, and the ability to join in on Resilia's Ask Me Anything sessions through our platform. And that through that, we're able to focus on one specific topic area and then take questions from the audience of nonprofits that we support. Um, and this is a little different now than what it has been over the past year because we actually recently launched um, what we call community, which is a private sort of social media for our nonprofits throughout Resilia. So not just within this cohort, but actually uh, the Resilia wide universe as well. So you'll be able to connect with organizations outside of the Denver area who, you know, maybe share um, the target demographic that you guys are serving or the mission area uh, or what have you, so that we're able to really support peer to peer learning. And um, next on our list is gonna be Lorraine diving into the platform. But before we do that, I'd love to just kind of pause, um, give us the opportunity to uh, ask any questions if we have them. Gave that three solid crickets, so I think Lorraine. I have, oh, I have a sorry, question. Sorry. This is Berenice with the, the Climate Action Office here in City and County of Denver. Um, let me put my camera. So I have a question. Do you guys offer uh, bilingual uh, training, and can you do in-person visits as well? Because many nonprofits, and probably you will talk about it, many nonprofits don't have them. The staff capacity to come online or you know to fill out surveys you need to be in person with them and teach them how to submit um, a request how to apply for a utility survey incentive what programs are, are out there and i just wonder if you are going to offer that so then i will be happy to to help you outreach that service especially with priority equitable underserved nonprofits thank you yeah, definitely. We we do have uh, bilingual staff in a variety of uh, language areas. Um, and while typically most of our services are via Zoom, we do try to meet nonprofits where we're at, recognizing that, you know, uh, in terms of equity, internet uh, is not always the most accessible thing uh, for folks. So when possible, uh, if we want to do phone calls, that's something that we can do. And then we do have a few staff members, um, team members who are actually located in Denver. So um, if there is ever that need, we can kind of tap those folks to see if they can provide some in-person support as well. But uh, Lorraine, if there's anything else that you wanted to add to that, definitely feel free. Um, no, I think you um, you shared all the information, Kayla. Um, but thank you for that question, Berenice. Thank you. All right. Any other questions um, before we um, dive into our platform? And again, folks, feel free to um, interrupt me um, it, as I'm doing the, the deep dive, um, you know, by using the chat or bringing your voice into this space. So let me go ahead and do a quick screen share. So again, folks, as Kayla shared with us earlier, um, this is our nonprofit first um, online platform. Um, as you can see here, um, I'd like to take your attention on the left-hand side where you can find the primary platform features, uh, which is Community Impact Fundraising Academy and Organization. Um, I'll spend a little bit of um, a little bit of time under each tabs, and I will pause for questions um, along the way. Um, but really, to ensure again, just to kind of reiterate what Kayla shared with us earlier, 
um, the level of access really is available for anyone in the organization. So that really what makes uh, Resilia unique is that not only it's available for um, the executive director or the program director, but really anybody from um, volunteers, board members, um, consultants even. So making sure that the capacity is really being built um, across the organization. Um, to make sure that everyone has access to the Resilia platform and overall the Resilia services, um, there is an option within the platform to add anybody from your organization um, as a user of the platform by clicking on team on the left hand side. Um, you would just go ahead and add member. Um, you would just you could just put in their name information there um, and designating an account type and even role. Um, again, this is just to make sure that everybody within the organization has access to the Resilia platform. Um, by taking us here on organization, um, so there is an option for folks here, and apologies, just loading right now. Um, there is an option here um, for folks to store their um, any documents and data that they'd like um, within the Resilia platform. Again, anything, any data or documents that you upload, oops, any documents or data that you upload or any organizations upload within Resilia only belongs to the organization. So we really honor the confidentiality and privacy of our users like yourself. Um, so again, going there on documents, Compliance, um, I would say that, you know, as a former fundraiser, um, this is actually one of my favorite features um, just because it kind of provides you like a checklist and also some storage on documents that are necessary for your nonprofits to maintain your compliance. Um, this is really helpful for any type of nonprofit, but really for any, you know, organizations who are looking to obtain their 501c3. Um, this serves as a really helpful um, quick checklist of what you need to maintain um, to maintain your compliance. Um, these two features here on the representation and board development, um, again, as I mentioned, or as we shared earlier, Resilia is accessible, um, can also be accessible for your organization's board members. Um, so these two features here on their board development and representation, um, are dedicated to support any um, board governance and board development work. But let me just go up here. I'm just gonna kind of dance around these features here. Under impact, so as that's loading, um, here at Resilia, when we think about impact, um, we really think of two different ways to measure your impact, to measure your measure your organization's impact or a programmatic impact. Um, so that's through data. So data points, dollars, again, as a former fundraiser, um, and also through your story. So really those powerful um, stories um, or narratives that um, you write or you tell as an organization. So under impact in initiatives, there is a, we have this feature called impact initiatives that allows our users the capability to measure um, and report on any um, impacts or uh, objectives that your organization is working on. Um, so this feature gives you the, um, this, the capability to provide your organization's mission, right, as sort of this um, guiding star to help guide you as you set and track your goals. Um, you can see here the way to really use this feature is by clicking plus add initiative. Um, as you we look through the platform, there is an opportunity for you to sort of hover over terms that are in bold, blue, and underlined um, to give you that definition. So really an initiative is another way of saying objective, right? Your programmatic objective. Um, so for example, right, let's actually use this as an example. Um, this nonprofit, they one of their objective, their initiative is really increasing um, childhood literacy in Houston, Texas area. And the way to really get to that objective is to provide some goals. 
right? How do you plan on increasing? How would you get to increasing childhood literacy in Houston, Texas area? Um, so the, within this feature, it gives you the capability to set goals, to categorize those goals, right? So for this, for instance, for this organization, they're categorizing it as mission driven. Um, you can also set owners since um, within the platform, you're able to add multiple users within the organization. So for example, if you want to, um, you know, give your program, um, program, mem program manager the ownership right, to set and um, update these goals, you can. It also shows you a nifty progress bar, right? And ultimately it shows you sort of like a visual map um, of, um, of your progress within, um, within, that, um, within that goal. Um, similarly, right, this other goal, um, they provided a goal of increasing enrollment and after school program um, along the way, Right, it's really up to our users, to our nonprofits, um, to set as to when you would update these goals. Um, really, this feature is for available for all the users, right, who have access to the Resilia platform, um, to make sure that you have this resource to track um, and measure your impact and your success as an organization. Um, so, along, you know, through that line of success. Um, an impact. Um, there's also a capability here to share your stories, um, your narratives as an organization. Um, so through this feature, it allows our users to create visually appealing um, blog posts, stories, and narratives, um, share them out to your network, share them out to different platforms, um, and also give you the ability to track impact or track the essentially uh, monitor the traction of um, each story. So really, you know, this is a really great resource for any anybody within the organization. But um, if you're being intentional um, with, um, you know, looking at data, looking at the traction here for any sort of like um, the marketing folks, right? Marketing communication folks within the organization. Um, this is a really great feature to, to have or to look into. Um, so to utilize this feature, right, you could just hit, hit plus create story. Um, our users can select any of this pre-made templates that we have in here, or you can build something from scratch. Um, but to provide some inspiration here, here is a published story of how it could look like. Um, so you can see here, you can add some pictures, you can add a photo. You can also embed a link um, like a donation page right? Um, you can also share the story, meaning publishing it across different platforms. So for example, if you were, you know, to publish a story, right, you can easily share it out on different social media platforms that you see in here, or you can also do like an email blast or embed it within your website. Um, again, a lot of um, our users in here util utilize this in many ways, like um, publishing program participant spotlights, um, again, <laughs> fundraising here. So doing email blasts on any fundraising appeals that you may have as an organization, right? And and it really provides you that that data that you need to measure the traction of any, um, you know, any posts or any narratives that you share in here. Um, so I'm going to pause here to see if there's any questions. And I'm also going to look at the chat. Um, for any questions that you might have. All right. All right. Any questions here? Great. So let's go ahead and again, feel free to interrupt me anytime here. I'm going to our fundraising tab. So again, I'm below impact under fundraising. So Resilia recently launched our newest feature called Donations. Um, so it just allows our users to set up um, the backend infrastructures to receive electronic individual donations, as well as set up and customize donation pages. So really this is for, um, for folks here, right? For our users who may or may not have their donation page set up, 
threat, um, donation page set up and or have access to that infrastructure um, to do so. Uh, Resilia, we have partnered with Stripe. Um, Stripe is a leading payment processor in the field um, to essentially you know, roll out this feature. Um, we're really excited about this because it really allows our users to receive those electronic individual donations, track them, right? So really track um, track your individual individual donors um, information, right? And for you to also set up your donation page. So again, going back to the sample that I showed earlier, um, this is how a donation page could look like. Um, folks who, who set that up, I believe it only takes them um, as soon as you filled in your information, it only takes them a few days, um, you know, to essentially fully launch this donation page. Um, again, a really great feature for um, a lot of our users have used it to create their donation pages, really leverage it um, to make sure that they're also able to track um, different individual donations that come in. So our funder finder, the remaining sort of features here under our fundraising um, feature, um, our funder finder. So this is essentially a database that is composed of data from um, 990s that were received from foundations as of 2018. So really think of it as a grant or database. So if you're doing um, grant research or prospecting, right, so looking for um, potential funding from foundations. Um, this is a really great sort of like preliminary research tool that um, our users you our user users utilize for their work um, to to support their grant research um, and prospecting work. Um, it gives um, our users the ability to um, sort them by mission areas. So really to dive that dive right in and being intentional with your research. You can also sort them by locations of impact, right? And also the funder's geographic location. Um, so again, for something for folks, something our users leverage for their grant, you know, grant specific and grant research work. And finally, um, and really getting into Academy. So as Kayla shared with us earlier, um, our Resilia platform houses many um, e-learning resources that are really designed and customized to meet the needs of our users, our nonprofit users, right? So again, under resources, this is where all of those e-learning resources live. Um, the way to kind of utilize this is you can use the search bar at the top, or you can also browse by topic. So there's a lot of resources here, um, as you can see, and they're continuously evolving. Um, and we're continuously adding them, really leaning on to and really meeting the needs and aligning with the feedback that we're receiving from our users. So as you can see that we have a lot of different topics in here, right, that are really relevant um, to the needs of our users. You can also, they can also be sorted by resource type. So as, I, as Kayla mentioned, um, we have different courses that you can take at your own pace. Right, so those bite-sized videos that are between five to ten minutes. You have articles that you can read um, that are based um, on best practices in the field, and we also have templates that you can download directly on your computer and uh, repurpose it as you need. Um, so let's do one for example. So for example, right, fundraising. I've just selected fundraising, and let's say you need a quick sort of like fundraising template. So as you can see that there's a lot of resources here that are related to fundraising. So since we were talking about grants earlier, so I'm gonna go ahead and click grant review checklist. So you can see here that this is a really nifty checklist, right? That you can download directly um, on your computer and it's something that you can own and repurpose on your own as you need to. Um, so again, a lot of resources here Right, you can also save resources as you look through them. Anybody who's been added as a user within the Resilia platform um, have access to everything that you see here, um, including Resilia Academy. Um, a lot of our, you know, a lot of our users here really utilize them in many ways. Um, 
you know, from helping on, you know, helping sort of like onboard or orient a new staff member um, in an organization, right, all the way to um, supporting organizations' current projects or initiatives. So if you have um, an ongoing or upcoming fundraising campaign, um, or even if you are a seasoned uh, director in the organization, right, and if you're really just looking to um, refine your skill sets, right, or really just watch new courses that um, may align with what you're needing right now, um, a lot of our users really find these resources here as, you know, continuously evolving and truly meeting um, their goals and their needs at the time. And finally, to coaching, right, as I mentioned, um, part of the funder program here um, with the city and county of Denver, um, organizations would receive um, unlimited access to coaching, meaning you can book as many coaching sessions as you would like, right, if you're a part of the funder program. Um, this really mirrors the menu that Kayla showed to us or shared with us earlier. Um, again, um, each coaching session lasts about 30 minutes and they're available for anybody and everybody within the organization. Um, folks have used coaching um, as an opportunity, again, for as a professional development resource, as a leadership development resource. Uh, folks have used coaching to receive support on an ongoing or upcoming project they're working on. So. Um, for me, as an example, I'm a coach in fundraising, so I've supported um, I've supported seasoned EDs as they're working on a fundraising campaign, right? Um, and I've even supported um, newer folks um, within that development field um, to either think about you know creating a fundraising plan, right, or really strengthening their fundraising skills. Um, I'm also a coach in board management. So have supported um, board, um, board member, uh, board of directors as a collective body to make sure that they're aligned in their board governance um, practices that they have. Um, have also supported board members individually, right? So that they have whatever they need to become effective and more engaged um, for the organization. So again, you know, folks really see um, our coaching services here as a valuable resource to um, support the organization and also um, sustain themselves as leaders in the field, um, as leaders in the nonprofit sector. Um, yeah, before I, you know, stop sharing my screen here, because I'd love to see people's um, squares again here. Um, are there any questions um, or anything that you'd like to add to Kayla? Um, about our platform here? No, I think that you covered it. Great, I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, oh, I think I also forgot one thing, my apologies. So I forgot to mention community here. <laughs> so uh, as Kayla shared with us earlier, um, the pillar of um engaging with cohorts and other nonprofits in the sector or other nonprofits within our ecosystem here. Um, we recently launched um, Community here, which is essentially like an exclusive digital space for nonprofits to communicate with other, co with other cohorts, with other nonprofits. So that's also living in our Resilia platform. So when you go ahead and click on that, it actually takes you to here. So you can see here that this is how it looks like on my end, right? So there's a lot of opportunities here to um, receive support, right? As a nonprofit um, or as, a, as an individual really working in the sector um, and also provide support, right? This is really meant for folks to engage with one another. Um, there's also within that, um, there's also group coaching that's available. So again, you know, thinking on the one-on-one -on -one group, you know, the one-on-one -on -one coaching that's available for an organization. Um, these group coaching sessions are available for anybody within a uh, resilient ecosystem of nonprofits. Um, so if you were to sort of, um, you know, looking here at group coaching, 
right? We have one coming up tomorrow that's about marketing and branding, right? So in addition to anything that you see here on the platform, right? These group coaching sessions are available for the organization, right? No appointment necessary. You just show up with any questions that you have um, about the area that that it, that it is about here on group coaching. So it's a really exciting way for um, folks to meet other nonprofits, other individuals outside of your region, outside of your um, respective communities and, you know, counties, et cetera. So that's what I forgot <laughs> to share here. So I'm going to go ahead and stop share. Um, are there any other questions here? And Kayla, thank you for responding to questions. I have a question. Yes. So there are so many resources that you guys offer that it might be hard for one nonprofit to wrap their head around what exactly their starting point would be. Mm -hmm. So, and you may have said this already and I may have just missed it, but is there a way for any nonprofit to sort of have a an initial conversation with you guys so that you could say, okay, well, those are your problems and these are the resources that we suggest you start with? Yes. That, so that's actually a great question. Um, and part of this wonderful funder program with the city and county of Denver is to make sure that we're able to onboard and orient organizations in Resilia. So if you were to join this funder program, Christina, right, if your organization joins the funder program, um, a part of our onboarding process is for um, Kayla and I to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the, each organization um, as a way to, you know, talk about, assess your needs, right? Talk about your goals, your priorities for the organization, and really using the responses that you share with us, uh, we then point you to specific resources within the platform. Um, you know, definitely, you know, that's definitely a feedback that we receive that the platform can feel overwhelming, right? Like, where do I start? Where do I begin? So we really use that, um, the initial few weeks and months of this funder program. Um, we want to make sure that you, we are pointing you, right, to fundraising avenue or strategic planning, you know, boulevard here, right? If those were your priorities, right, as an organization. Uh, we want to make sure that you have everything that you need at the moment um, and that, you know, you don't feel overwhelmed and uh, lost here in the in the program. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions here? Great. Um, I think we are ready for, oh, Will, did you, I saw you come on camera. Um, anything that you'd like to add or any question that you might have to? Uh, nope, uh, we would like to, and I, if you don't mind, if you or Lorraine could talk about one of the questions we placed to you all when we initially connected was this idea of uh, where does someone, so, you know, some of these are, most of these may be established nonprofits, but what if you are someone who's looking to start a nonprofit and kind of how could you work with those folks? Um, Kayla, do you want to take that question and then I can chime in too? Yeah, definitely. So I think that um, we see kind of a, the gambit of organizations or community organizations uh, within Resilia, some of whom have their 501c3, 501c3, some of whom don't have that quite yet. Um, so I think a really great part about Resilia is through the coaching, being able to identify what exactly are the needs that you are going to have for getting sort of all of your ducks in order um, and, and being able to support you in that, especially in terms of, you know, like, solidifying what is your mission, what is your values, um, how do you go about, you know, creating your bylaws and things like that. Um, Lorraine, did you have anything? Um, I think, yeah, I think that sounds good. And we also have a, um, specifically, we have this area called compliance. Um, so we do have some resources within the platform that, um, you know, provides practices on, you know, obtaining your 501c3. Uh, we also have a dedicated coaching team for compliance itself. 
Um, so if, you know, folks need some, you know, one-on-one -on -one direction, right, as you are obtaining your status um, and maintaining your status, really, um, as a 501c3, we do have that um, area covered as well. And Yvonne, um, you know, there's a question here from Yvonne, a nonprofit receiving funding from federal, state, and city for providing treatment for substance use disorder. I'm about to type in my response in here, but I'm just going to ask out loud. Um, Yvonne, are you referring to like seeking out grants specifically to get those resources? And feel free to just respond back. Okay, yes. Yes. Yeah, so again, you know, within our area of expertise here, um, we do have some coaches that have experience in um, within government grants. So we can provide that support for you as you go through those processes of, a, of applying for, you know, state federal funding. Um, so that's something that we can, you know, provide support in, right? So like, such as building maintenance and repair. So definitely, right, a lot of um our clients are also seeking out similar resources um, that, that are not just project specific. So yes, to your question. And Yvonne, we also, in our office, we do a series uh, that we're gonna kick back up in the fall uh, called Doing Business with the City. And it's a, it's a separate workshop outside of this program where we kind of engage nonprofits on how to do contracts and grants with the city and county of Denver. And so I would encourage you to take a look at, at those once we start them back up. And with that being said, I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to tell you that we have a call out right now for a recovery grant. So for nonprofits that are interested in uh, who's been impacted by the, the pandemic, uh, we have a grant out now. It's part of the American Rescue Plan funding. And if you go to our website, you can get uh, all the information on the RSVP. The deadline for that grant is August 7th but there are resources out there. And so, uh, so again, we have some specific things for folks to do business with the city uh, as well. Thank you, Will. That sounds a, a really like a, sounds like a really exciting opportunity. So thanks for sharing that. Um, Cora, I see your hand. Hello, good afternoon. Um, First, I just want to say as a small nonprofit, like all of these platforms can be super daunting, right? Um, so I just want to say I appreciate the, um, the thoughtfulness that y'all put into this. So props to the whole organization. One of the things that I, as a nonprofit founder and executive director, have been so scared of is reoccurring donors and moving them over to another platform. So, is that something that you all could help us with to navigate that? Like, I full transparency have not switched platforms because of that one component um, and us being so incredibly small and having the support to do that. So, are you? Um... First of all, thank you, you know, thank you, Cora, for that kind, um, you know, kind feedback. Um, so are you referring to you have an existing um, donor management system and you're thinking of sort of migrating your recurring donors data within, uh, you know, possibly Resilia in our future? Yes. The donations future? Yeah. I mean, I think like, you know, one of the things I'm, I'm looking at is a right. Like everything is housed in one space on the Resilia platform, which is so cool. Right. Um, and then also have being accessible to the entire organization is super awesome as well. Um, but yeah, so we have right now nine reoccurring donors mm -hmm. on a monthly basis that, you know, really are phenomenal and we would want to migrate them over. And that's just seems like a big chore. Um, and one of those things that kind of like, ah, we'll just stick with the same platform because it's working. Um, even though there's better options out there and just not having the, the hmm. capacity to do the, the, the swap. Yes. I believe currently, um, that our donations future does not have, um, sort of like that automatic capability where you can just sort of migrate from like, you know, don't, you know, one point A to point B. Um, however, that is something that we can provide 
to support you in, right? So like we can share some, perhaps if you may need to do some like manual import and, you know, this is a feedback that we have definitely received and have relayed internally here, right? To make sure that um, there's a, a, you know, there's like a feature for folks to just, you know, automatically kind of import that in that way. So the answer is not yet. Um, that's not a feature that the donations feature has right now. Um, however, I do want to share that, you know, we can support you in that way if that is something that you would be thinking about, right? Um, especially those like recurring donors. Again, as you know, Kayla and I, we're both fundraisers here. We recognize that it's important to keep in touch with those folks, right? As you're doing your continuously doing your individual donor development work. Um, does that sound right, Kayla? I don't think we have that yet, but I know they might be working on that internally. Yeah, not quite yet, but I think, you know, what everyone is bringing up is actually like a lot of really great coaching opportunities and, and thinking about, you know, doing that transition over with your recurring donors. I think that we could really be supportive in you and how to like have those conversations and even, you know, possibly be saying, hey, we're going to be uh, transitioning systems. Um, while we're doing that, you know, would you consider, you know, upping your $20 a month gift to a $25 a month gift? And I think, you know, being able to support, um, you know, increasing that gift size uh, could be something that through coaching, we're able to help you navigate. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, any other question? And thank you, Will, for responding to Betanese here. All right. Um, I think we are ready, Kayla, for our next steps. Yeah, slide. definitely. Yeah. So um, instead of sharing my screen again, just for, you know, the purpose of being able to like kind of see each other, have a conversation, I'm going to put it in our chat. But ultimately, as far as next steps, I'm going to share mine and Lorraine's personal emails um, in case you guys have any questions about the platform or the program. Um, we are going to be sharing out uh, the recording from today the slide deck um, and also any kind of collateral that we can also provide in Spanish um, for our Spanish speaking friends. I know that the city and county of Denver is also going to be sharing out this material um, through their website for folks who couldn't make it today. And in addition to that, um, in the chat, I'm also putting um, a link to the form to opt in and ultimately, you know, sign up for Resilia. Um, this is going to be a link that's also going to be on the city and county of Denver site. Um, so if there's anything that I missed there, we'll happy to pass it back to you. Yes, no, that was the last order of business we were going to do is uh, to just share and we'll we'll dump out. We have a slide that we can I won't pull it up because I like seeing people's faces, too. But we'll dump it in the in the chat and I'll just ask Tiffany or Julia. I think one of you have that slide as well if you'll just dump it in the chat. But it's basically, uh, if you go to our website, the D1 website on the city, there's a button to take you to the technical assistance uh, program. When you open it up, it'll have a link to Resilia. So if you wanna learn more about their company and read their history, some of that stuff, uh, all you can do, you can access all of that there, but you can also apply directly uh, to the program there. And so uh, we're trying to make our little page a uh, one-stop shopping so we can just drive folk there. And so we'll dump a bunch of this contact content from the day, the recording, the, the slide deck. And, and uh, we have a couple of collateral pieces that uh, will be uh, in Spanish as well, the announcement, some of those things that we've converted to Spanish. So we'll dump all of that stuff on our website. So you'll be able to access that uh, in the next day or so. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Uh, anything else for the good of the order? My team, Julia, Tiffany, uh, anything? Nope, not for me. And again, I will be, uh, I will become less active uh, in this and Julia will, as we start to get closer to the start, uh, you will start to see Julia a little more than me, but uh, but my whole team, we are making ourselves available because we are uh, we are over the moon excited to to get this program started. And we think, uh, you know, once we get it started, uh, we're really looking forward to, to doing this, having a whole new enrollment period in 2024. And 
keeping the party going is what we're hoping. And so, uh, so again, we're just so excited to have partnered with Resilia and to have discovered them. And so, uh, so we're looking forward to it. And so again, uh, we'll make ourselves available. So if there is nothing else, uh, Resilia team, any last words? Um, no, just again, flagging our opt-in form on that Kayla shared <coughs> in on the chat. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you'd like to just connect on a one-on-one -on -one basis for, you know, just some quick questions that you have um, about Resilia and also just flagging the deadline to um, join or um, fill in the opt-in form by August 21st. So we're correct. really, yes, we're really excited and really eager to meet and connect again. Um, and we'll, we'll see you soon. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate you guys taking the time. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.